Making animations for Animesh in OpenSim. This is part four of my video course on making Animesh. When last we left our hero, he had a rigged mesh but needed to animate it. Blender has a workspace up here for animation, but the, oh, there's very few differences between that and the default screen. One difference is, is that the timeline is bigger. You may have noticed that there was this funny thing on the bottom of your screen that you never found a use for. Well, now we finally found a use for it. This is the timeline where you set up uh, your animations. And by default, it has 450 frames in an animation. Well, I want to make a two-second animation. The default speed is 24 frames per second, so uh, you would think that 48 frames would be enough for my animation. Now I'm going to drag that uh, those 24 frames into the middle and I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse to make it bigger so I can see more of the frames. And a rule introduced by OpenSim or by Linden Labs is that the first frame in every animation has to be the T pose, which means your object in its resting state. You, at, you create animations by, in object mode, you select your armature, and then you're allowed to go into pose mode. Now, that, uh, that first frame that has to be a, um, the resting state, what if you don't have your resting state? The easiest way to get he, your, your animesh back to the T-pose, the resting state, is to select the whole armature, and then in Pose, there's a clear transform, and you can click on All. So now we have our object in its resting state, and we can create a new keyframe. The process is going to be to create several keyframes and have the system interpolate movement in between those. Well... Uh, the easiest way to create a keyframe is to right-click and bring up the uh, the context menu here. And the very first item in the co in the context menu is insert keyframe. So I say, yeah, I want to do that. And you have the option of location, rotation, scale, uh, combinations thereof. It turns out that um, the easiest way to make animations is to only change the rotations. And if you think about it, even in an avatar, uh, our bones don't move very far or change uh, size, but they only rotate at the joints. So saving rotations in a keyframe is the logical thing to do. If you look at the, um, at the timeline, there's now a, uh, uh, a yellow dot there saying there's something there. That's frame one. So frame two is going to be the first, uh, the first keyframe in our animation. And so I'm going to move this little blue uh, uh, indicator over to uh, frame two. And if you're used to programs like Quavimator, the way that you, you create an animation is you, you click on the joints that you want to change and I'm using the R rotate key and I'm tilting them. Rotate, tilt, and then remembering to hit the left mouse button when I get it where I want it to. You can tell him to rotate around the Y axis only to tilt uh, forwards and backwards in this case. Or uh, you can tell him to uh, rotate around the um, the x-axis only. If you don't tell him what axis to rotate around, you rotate an axis that points at what you're looking at. So it kind of rotated at a uh, slight angle there. So let's say this is the first pose in my dancing pole. Well, now I have it ready to save. Remember to select all of the joints, then right click insert keyframe, rotations only, and now a yellow dot appears here. If I have a two second animation, the next step, uh, let's say a half a second later, would be frame 12, but because I had to stick an extra frame in there, 
a half a second later is frame 13. So on frame 13, I'm going to tell him, clear this one. And I'm going to try and just make a another rotation that tilts in the opposite direction. Rotate in Y. Rotate in X. Rotate. And let's save that. Insert keyframe, rotation only. And now here's the fun part. I can grab this blue cursor and drag it back and forth and I can watch my pole dance. I've rambled on too long, so I'm going to shorten this and make just a one second animation that is 24, 25 frames long. I'm going to make it just dance back and forth between two poses like that. But to do that, I actually need a third frame. I can select this, this keyframe for keyframe number two, and I can copy it. And then I can go over to keyframe 25. And I can paste it there. So now our animation is going from this first pose, swinging around to the other side, and then swinging right back to where he came from. And one of the requirements of a pose in from OpenSim is that the first and the last frame of an animation has to be exactly the same or there's there's a jump and we've met that requirement and now I have only a one second animation so I'm going to shorten this end time 25 which will be one second of 24 frames plus that T pose all we have to do now is export it if you have never saved an animation before you have to learn how to edit the preferences and in the the add add-ons uh, blender comes with a, a bunch of add-ons for doing all sorts of things and the add-on you need is called bvh and when i when i told him to search for bvh he found the import export the biovision motion capture format and uh, all you need to do is is make sure this uh, little box here is is highlighted is checked on and then the next time you go to File, Export, one of the file formats that you'll find here, uh, uh, BVH. Save as BVH. So I'm going to call this DP1 for Dance Pole 1. And like a lot of the, uh, the save tools, it has a bunch of options here. It has a scale which is only important if you uh, move the bones. And it has a rotation, which does uh, nothing, as far as I can tell. Changing your, your, your axis of rotation has no effect. And it has a click button here called uh, Root Translation Only. You uh, definitely want to click this unless you're moving the joints, which it's recommended you don't do, that especially beginners, you don't want to try and move the bones. It's a pain to get that to work. So I have DP1 and I have export BVH. Unfortunately, you can't use that BVH file as it is. And I've taken too long, so I have to put off telling you how to fix it until we get to part five of my four-part anime series.